This is the Fox team. Um, so to introduce the team and the project, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Gina Barmond. She's the Vice President of Audience Research at Fox Corporation. Hello, everyone. Um, this has been such a fantastic experience to get to work with the student teams on these projects, um, and I'm so excited to be a part of this milestone. Like our audiences, Fox Entertainment is increasingly cross-platform. We are simultaneously a broadcast TV network and growing digital business. The two projects we're talking about today deepen our understanding of these owned assets as platforms to promote our content. Um, with the goal of maximizing broadcast audience tune-in to premieres of our shows. The student teams analyzed 73 different campaigns to do this. They dissected marketing variables across box network promotion, corporate synergy, social, and even looked at paid media. The cross-platform nature of this data and the corresponding entertainment marketing strategies made this a complex case. Um, and this incredibly talented team has uncovered a number of interesting and actionable findings. So without further ado, I'm excited to pass it over to the student teams to tell you more. Awesome, thanks, Gina. I will be sharing my screen. So Zach and I are in the engagement leads on this project. And in the interest of time, I think only Zach and I will be presenting today. So give me a second. All right. You guys see that okay? Okay, so welcome. Thanks for having us today. Um, thanks for the introduction, Gina. Um, as you know, this is the Wharton Analytics Accelerator, and then we'll kick off by introducing our team. So Zach. Uh, hey, everyone. As Sal mentioned, I'm Zach March, uh, Wharton MBA class of 22. Uh, I'm the engagement lead. I will be joined here today with Shui Meng. Um, he's a technical lead. And then as you can see, uh, there are five analysts. The team was a little unique. Um, we had th four of us here in Philadelphia and three of us were located in the, the greater Beijing area. So off to you, Sally. Yep. And then this is my team. I was on the social media side. Um, Tim and I were the engagement leads on for this team. I was the business engagement lead. He's the technical lead. And then we also had two senior analysts, Emily and Ahmed, as well as three junior analysts, Naveen, Keshav, and Renee. Awesome. So we're also like spread across the globe. Um, my team, we were mostly in the US. Zach's team was spread across the US as, as well as China. So a bit of a um, a time zone stretch that we had to work with, but interesting representation from across the globe. So just going over the presentation today, um, because of the time zone differences, as well as the goals of each team, we will begin with, like we did with introductions. And then um, Zach will go first with traditional marketing campaigns and the findings that they found there. Then social media content marketing will also present our findings and key takeaways, and then we'll have questions and answers. So each team will follow the agenda on the left with executive summary, key questions, findings, and then key takeaways. So let's uh, pass it off to Zach. All right, next slide. So real quick, uh, reiterate some of the points that Gina had brought up, but so we're working essentially with two data sets. Um, the first was the Fox promo data set, which had 73 campaigns or TV shows across 67 variables. Those variables could be anything from uh, just total time to anything, if anyone knows marketing details, GRPs, frequency reach. Um, and then we ended up combining those details or those two data sets for the traditional marketing and the social media marketing into one, which is what uh, Sally's team went through. Um, and then throughout it, we, we went through uh, and with collaboration from Fox data scientists, remove some variables that uh, were becoming problematic um, just due to some, some missing uh, data. And then there you can see kind of a breakdown at the bottom of, of when, of just when the shows premiere, um, just highlight of, of most of Fox's shows premiering in the fall and then there most of their shows being new. Uh, next slide. So specifically for the traditional marketing uh, campaign team, we were looking kind of at two main 
questions, um, both related, but the first is going to be, we're trying to find a marketing mix model, to figure out how we could optimize uh, Fox's own platforms um, to really just increase their program premier reach. Um, and then the second was to try to find those factors uh, that were going to increase the return on investment for these historical campaigns. So the approach that we took for this is we just because we were geographically separated, we sort of split into two sub teams, um, three, the three guys uh, working in China and then the Philly team, both doing exploratory data analysis and then coming back up to work together on modeling um, the campaign effectiveness and trying to get that program premier reach um, understood. And then program premier reach, well, that essentially is the number of people that tuned in to watch the show's premiere um, at, at its most basic form. And that's what we're really trying to increase across all this or, or understand. And if, we'll go into the takeaways at the end, but kind of like the big takeaways up front was that, you know, NFL premieres. So a show that premieres right after an NFL plays a big part um, in, in Fox statistics here. And then also paid media plays a big part in it as well. So next slide. So key questions that we did that kind of guided our analysis uh, top was the, the campaign effects. So just looking across categories, trying to break down the trends for genres, new and returning season premieres. Um, then also looking at the channel effects for number two there. So this is literally just looking at the linear versus nonlinear. So what that is, is looking at the actual like TV channels, um, like Fox's uh, channels versus it's um, versus like Hulu and then the synergy versus paid, which is again, Fox like own channels um, versus ones that they pay for advertising on. Uh, we did get awareness data, but it's kind of out of the scope of this presentation. Um, and then, you know, we'll finish up with taking a look at the marketing mix data, which is where we're trying to figure out what's going to increase the program premier reach. So first slide here is just taking a look at the campaign effects across category. So here we're just trying to understand how an NFL premiere is going to affect the data um, across the genres. So on the top, we have the data with NFL and on the bottom, it's without NFL. Um, and then on the left, we have the two comparisons of the charts for promo reach and on the right is conversion reach. So promo reach is the number of people that have actually seen an advertisement for the television show. And then conversion reach is the number of people that saw that advertisement ended up going on to watch that television show. So they were converted to watch it. And just briefly, uh, the charts are split up by their, their genres. So looking on the, the Y axis over there, you've got unscripted going down to comedy. And then we haven't further broken down into the proportions for on channel, um, the synergy. So other Fox owned platforms and then the paid media. What you can kind of notice is that they're generally proportional throughout, but you will see that, you know, half of the promo reach for Fox um, is for its drama. Uh, so drama being a very important category to it. Um, and the other important note to take away from this is that the conversion reach is essentially about two thirds of the promo reach. So about two thirds of the people that watch a television show after an NFL premiere, or excuse me, yeah, will were converted to actually watch it. Now, the important distinction when we go down to without the NFL data is you'll notice that that pattern of, of two thirds holds true for the comedies and the unscripted, but you can see there um, with, the, with the drama category um, for that conversion reach, it's roughly just a, about over a half. So you, you get the understanding that for the drama category, it's very important to be, uh, for, to be after a NFL premiere. Um, next slide, please. So here we're further breaking down uh, what the conclusions we have for the, the post NFL premieres, this time looking across channel and the different channel variables. So we have a, a table here of just kind of the most significant um, where we saw the just the most significant trends across the data with on the top being a non uh, post NFL premiere and on the bottom uh, row being a uh, post NFL premiere. And just looking there at the, the far left one in the box, the program premiere reach, which is the number of people that tune into the show, uh, the premiere of the show um, is almost double if it comes after an NFL game. But then if you look at some of the ones in the blue boxes, 
So the on-channel total reach, there, you know, there's roughly no difference between the two. And then if we go to the, the blue box in the middle, the on-channel total promo time, really we can see that it's higher for the NFL, but not significantly. Um, and to, to further drive home this point of the importance of the NFL, if we could look at the charts in the, the bottom left-hand corner, the, the conversion reach for a non-NFL on average is about half of that for uh, versus the, the NFL. But then when you look at the total promo time, the chart there to the right of it, you know, there's, they're roughly the same. So the number of seconds um, that was invested into the show uh, can be the same, but if it comes after an NFL game, it's going to be significantly higher. So the tune of about 192 to 220% um, conversion reach. Um, next slide, and I'll be followed by Max to go through the, our correlation here. Yeah, thanks, Zach. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Shuai Kang, also call me Max, and I'm the technical engagement leader of the first team. And I would briefly talk about the correlation heat map and the modeling methodology of our project. And as you can see here in the figure, we calculate the correlation coefficient between the different features in program premier reach and made the corresponding heat map. And the red in the figure represent the positive correlation with the program premier reach. And the darker the red is, the higher correlation uh, coefficient is. While the blue denotes uh, negative uh, coefficient. And the, and the red box here represent the, the features of uh, program premier reach here. And the features that are most relevant to the program premier reach are sorted according to the absolute value of the coefficient. And among which uh, the highest coefficient is placed at the top as shown in the uh, bar chart on the right. So like the, basically the, fi the final conclusion is that the, uh, the paid media matrix have the highest uh, correlation with the program premier reach, uh, followed by the on-channel matrix and the cross-platform synergy impression matrix. So next slide, please. Yeah, so, and the second part is the methodology of our modeling. So the, uh, the, the following modeling method was mainly used in the process of our data analysis. And the first one is, is something called the live one out chemist clustering. And we, so basically we wanna come up with a method to determine the importance of the listed features. So we generate a novel method to do this. And the main mechanism of this method is that we use an iterative method to conduct chemist clustering over the subsets of the overall features. And if the standard deviation based on the chemist clustering without a certain feature is the smallest, it means that the lack of this variable has little influence on the results of clustering. And therefore, we, it, it came last in the importance ranking. And so the second, uh, second method is the decision tree method. So in our study, the decision tree is mainly used to explore the classification criteria of each attribute val value. That is the uh, threshold value of partition. And the third method is the multivariable uh, regression. So we use some, uh, so we use different uh, variables to predict the value of program premier reach. And due to the, uh, so like due to the time limit, we will not go through this part in detail. And also the, the third methodology also did not derive a, a really convincing conclusion in the end of the project. Uh, okay, so, so next, next slide, please. So uh, here is our main takeaways of our projects. So like the fir first for the effects of the uh, campaigns categories on the program premier reach, the most of the Fox News sh shows premieres are mid seasons will also be much higher across the streaming or uh, non-linear platform. And most and post NFL premieres have most doubled the program premier reach of all shows. 
And in terms of the channel effects, the off-channel matrix have the highest uh, correlation with the program primary reach. And so like for the, uh, as for the marketing strategy suspects, so uh, three features that has influenced the uh, program primary reach most are paid media promote time and the synergy cable A total promote time and uh, pr uh, program premiere season. So, yeah, so I will hand over, hand over to Sally again and who will talk about the social media and content marketing analysis. Yep, thanks, Max. All right, so now we're gonna go into the social media content marketing. Um, here's just a brief snapshot of what we're going to be covering. So our prompt was to determine the effects of social media content marketing. Um, and the approach that we took was we just conducted a bunch of EDA and explored some modeling um, initially. And then we like kind of tweaked that approach to use um, to focus more on results. And then we use that approach to uncover actionable insights into how social media platforms can be leveraged to increase tune in. Um, here's a snapshot of our key takeaways. I'll go into more details um, in the upcoming slides, but we decided that maybe um, we recommended that Fox should maybe post to social media more frequently over the weekend, but overall decrease daily posts to social media accounts in general. Um, there are efficiency gains to be had in cross-platform synergy prom promotion, as well as maybe increase non-viral and viral exposure and focus more on converting people to actual viewers. And then finally, just an additional um, insight that we thought might enhance our takeaways would be to augment our data with audience data. Um, so the key questions that we will be focusing on for this would are, are the following. So first, we'll go into Facebook, analyzing non-viral and viral exposure. We particularly focused on Facebook because we did have a way to quantify non-viral and viral exposure for this platform. Um, so the question that we'll be answering here is which programs are getting the best exposure amongst audiences and potential audiences. The second question that we'll be talking about is how does posting on social media impact reach? So the way that we're going to analyze this is um, compare engagement versus new posts. And then we'll, again, we'll um, talk about that a little bit more down the line. The third question is marketing by day of the week. And for this, we want to analyze, are there specific days when it might be better to post? Um, and then finally, we'll be analyzing TV promotions versus um, and prom uh, the impact of TV promotions on Premier Reach. So the two questions we'll be focusing on here is what are the impacts of the promos and also which campaigns are the most and least efficient in terms of ROI. So to kick it off, again, we're analyzing Facebook and um, in the realm of Facebook, we want to analyze the impacts of viral and non-viral exposure on Premier Reach. So the goal here was to analyze how we could convert non-audiences to potential audiences. And if we already had high exposure, um, which means that we already had a high base for potential audiences, how we could convert them, which is actual conversion, to an actual audience. So the definitions of uh, non-viral exposure is um, basically primaries. Like when Fox posts and you see that on your screen, that would constitute non-viral exposure. Viral exposure is more secondary. It's, um, you know, when you look on Facebook, there's a little comment that says, X friend likes this. And then maybe you see a post from Fox. That constitutes viral exposure. So the goals here, um, I already touched on this earlier, is the programs with high exposure that already have a potential audience, we want to focus on converting them to an actual audience, people that actually tune into the premiere. Um, for programs with low exposure, we want to focus on getting exposure first, actually reaching out and having people see those posts. Um, so just, just a, a brief highlight, uh, there are a lot more findings than just what's on the slides, but the key takeaways here were we found that dramas had the highest exposure overall, and comedy animations had the high, have much higher non-viral exposure. Um, Tuesdays also had very high viral exposure. We're not entirely why, and that might be better um, something for us to look further into. And Fridays also had the lowest viral exposure. Um, as expected, returning shows have much higher exposure overall. You know, it's returning, you already heard about it. Um, and overall, our recommendation here was maybe we should focus on converting those with high exposure to actual audiences. So the next thing I'll talk about is engagements versus posts. So here we want to analyze the effects of new posts in the days leading up to the premiere. 
Um, the definition of engagement, I think similar to the McDonald's team too, was like the sum of, an example would be like the sum of likes, comments, follower growth, et cetera, attribute to a show's profile on a given social media platform on a given date. So our main findings here after analyzing a number of shows is that posting one to two times per day and eventually ramping up to the premiere um, and maybe starting to post like a little bit higher, like three to four times a day in the last days leading up to the premiere led to the best like engagement levels, like more steady engagement le levels rather than like fluctuating up and down. If you're posting too much, people might unfollow. Um, it's like flooding their newsfeed and stuff like that. So our third question was marketing by day of week. And here we want to pinpoint any daily trends in social media usage to increase reach and engagement. So um, the relevant platforms that we analyzed here was Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And reach, like Gina said, was how many people tuned in to the TV premiere, um, like TV broadcast, not like on digital or streaming platforms. And what we measured here was, or used to measure this, was engagement per post. So how many people actually engaged with the post versus the number of new posts that were actually posted. Um, so the findings that we found here were that reach eng engagement seems to consistently spike on Fridays and Sunday had the lowest daily reach, but it had the highest average engagement per post. So I'll just, if, if you just like looked at this, um, the first row would show that there, were high, there was high reach on Fridays, um, but then engagement on the second row would peak on Sundays. So we thought that maybe posting on Friday was a good idea. And then gradually over the weekend, more and more people would actually interact with that post. And finally, we'll talk about TV promotions and premiere reach. So what we wanted to do here is analyze the impact and efficiency of campaigns in terms of promo time and reach. So what we thought was campaigns are more efficient if they can attract more viewers um, with less promo time. And we use promo time as a proxy for this cost. So the ROI that we're measuring here is cost per viewer. So again, that's uh, how much promo time we used for a given show and how much pe how many people it re reached. So in the lower left-hand side, that's just the like correlations of what we found. And we found that like maybe we could potentially capitalize on Synergy Cable B viewers. Um, Synergy Cable A is the least correlated with reach, which means like maybe um, advertising on that channel isn't the, the most effective in reaching the most number of people. And then um, the, 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 you can see like the black bits, the, class, uh, the cross platform synergies. Um, we found that maybe those could be can, cannibalizing broadcast TV premiere reach, but given the limitations of our data, we can draw any conclusive conclusion to, um, with this, but that was just something to analyze further. Uh, this is just also, um, this is just a brief graph, um, just graphing cost per viewer by genre. Um, and then we also conducted another analysis where we actually broke down um, the impacts or the ROI measurements by genre. So we found that the most efficient comedy animation campaigns um, were mostly impacted by Facebook organic impressions. But what more negatively impacted it was just posting across all platforms. For drama campaigns, it was strongly correlated with Twitter organic engagement and impressions. But if you posted a lot to Instagram and Facebook new posts, uh, or posted a lot to um, Instagram and Facebook, that might have not, not really um, helped the efficiency of drama campaigns. Then we also found comedy live action campaigns are highly correlated with Twitter and Facebook organic impressions. And across all campaigns, we found that they were all highly correlated with Wikipedia views and YouTube engagement. So those are two additional platforms that you, that Fox could potentially use um, to maybe predict how a show is doing or better analyze how it's going. So the key takeaways um, is, as reiterated earlier, is maybe post over the weekend um, with the outliers re uh, removed, we saw that reach was highest on Fridays and engagement increases over the weekend, peaking on Sundays. Um, overall, throughout the week, maybe uh, throughout the week on a weekly basis, maybe decrease daily posts to social media accounts. So we thought uh, posting maybe just one to two times per day, um, more than eight days out of the premiere and then ramping it up to three to four times per day in the days leading up to the premiere might lead to steady engagement um, and hopefully uh, higher reach. Um, 
And then the third point is invested across platform promotion strategy. This is the one analysis that we did that we were like, oh, okay, like um, this is interesting, but we couldn't draw anything conclusive about it. So in terms of the cost per viewer, that's the other thing. We use our ROI metric, which is cost per viewer. Um, and using that metric, we concluded that maybe cross platforms cost, again, using that ROI metric, were more costly compared to the other platforms. So that's just another point to investigate a little further. Um, increased non-viral and viral exposure. While we did only have Facebook to analyze um, this aspect, this is just cheap. This is like cheap advertising and more natural advertising that Fox doesn't have to put a lot of um, effort into or money into. So if um, we can somehow increase this type of exposure that will convert potential audiences to actual audiences, um, that would also be another avenue to explore. And finally, given the limitations of our data, and especially since this is marketing, we thought a lot of our insights could be better, more full, I suppose, if we had more um, demographics data regarding the audiences, because people of different ages and maybe even gender um, will use social media platforms differently. So that's a potential next step is augment our insights with these. And that's it. Does anyone have any questions? Great, right, thank you so much. If you have any questions, go ahead and send them uh, via chat. A couple of questions have come in. Um, first question from Mayan. So how do you know uh, if a particular customer is from the viral or non-viral exposure group? So we don't have audience data. Um, so if we're, if we're talking about like actual granular customers, we don't have that data. We have it more on a campaign level for a given date. Um, and that's that's how we quantified it in that sense. Yeah, also to add on to that, I think that is the information provided by the social media platforms. So they have those statistics like by Facebook. Right, okay. Um, any, from Matt, uh, Matt Gray, any thought about why NFL viewers were more inclined to watch drama versus others? I had that same question actually. Yeah. Uh I put a lot of thought into this and about like what type of, you know, we don't have any real demographic data with this. That's why it's just a thought, but I don't know. I, I was just thinking about like people's habits when they watch an NFL show and they kind of end up just sitting there the rest of the night. Um, so I, I don't really have a great answer for that, but I think it's just, uh, the NFL is a great way of getting people into their seats and watching a TV show. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> um, so uh from mary so this is for fox what was the most inspiring insight that the team delivered and which recommendations from the student team can be actionable that's for you gina all right cool <laughs> um <laughs> thanks mary i think the most inspiring insight was the week to week iteration and honestly thinking through these problems and getting such an innovative, uh, such different and innovative perspectives on them. Uh, I'll give a specific example, the viral non-viral approach to Facebook. That was, you know, something new and really cool to talk about. And it was so cool to bring that new perspective to looking at our social engagement, for example. Um, I think there's a lot of actionable findings in here and I'm really excited about that. So uh, for sure, digging into some of the, the findings around cross-platform synergy and how we can learn more. Um, I think the findings there will be directly actionable to our promotion strategy, but we definitely want to continue to do some digging there. Um, I think the social recommendations, marketing day of week, the viral non-viral recommendations, um, will be directly actionable and already have been, in fact. We've been using some of these findings to inform our social strategy for some of our comedies. So, and those are just to name a few. Lots of good work went into this. Thank you guys. Very nice. Um, I have a question. I'm gonna jump back to talking about the uh, the paid media promo time. And maybe I missed this. So you, you, you found that that was obviously important to increasing the uh, program premiere reach. Does this mean that you look specifically at the length of time of a promo and particular lengths were more or less effective in driving reach? And if so, no. what was the ideal length? So, 
the my bad probably should have defined the the variable a bit more for you but it's essentially it was like the it's the cumulative time that that advertise that it was advertised so it's like in thousands of seconds so the the total amount on the channel that that particular uh advertisement campaign went on oh, oh okay i see yeah so you you'd expect like with the correlation holding that the longer something is being advertised that it would get more program premiere each. Right. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Any that other was questions? The, that was our last question. So. Um, all right. I, I just had one question that I'm going to throw out there for, and this is really Gina and, and, and Yola. I was just wondering if for those who are on the, the, on this webinar here, could you just maybe express in a short, uh, a few sentences, what the time commitment was from your ask, from your viewpoint as, as a company? Um, to, if you could just comment on that. Sure, uh, I could comment. Uh, so we met with the teams weekly for about an hour, sometimes an hour and a half to just keep framing up, you know, to incorporating new insights, having cues, um, just um, uh, and, and fostering and engendering new ideas and different ways to look at the data. So that was relatively easy. That, that was just another meeting on the calendar. I, I would say the difficult part is <laughs> in such a highly matrixed organization, actually getting the data out of our tools and out of our databases over to the Wharton team, I, I think that took a little bit of, well, who owns this data and who owns that data? And, and even the social tool that we have with Sprinkler, it took a little bit of time to actually extract what we needed um, over the team. Luckily, you give us plenty of time ahead of the Spring Accelerator to, to get our data it, it all in check. So, um, so that's kind of invisible to everyone else, but the actual project itself was a ton of fun. I actually looked forward to my Friday mornings um, I, usually I'm like, oh, it's the end of the week. I'm so tired, but I was so energized by this team um, that it just was a ton of fun and really, um, really made me, I, I think, made me work well with other teams. So that, I think that's the other thing is this project doesn't touch just my team, which is a global team. It touches other teams um, on the U.S. side, our operations team, our finance team, our, our marketing teams, our insights team were all involved in this. So it was a great way to connect across teams on a fundamental project that will just um, help our overall strategy moving forward. So a lot of fun. Thank you so much, students, because you just brought a level of energy that, um, that uh, was just so... Um, it, it just will give me fond memories uh, of this project moving forward. W would love to do another one, actually. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Yola. Um, Gina, uh, did, did you wanna add anything? Not to put you on the spot, but if you want to feel- oh, not at all. I couldn't agree more with everything Yola said, to be honest. The one thing I'll, I'll build on is the data prep side of it. I definitely think that was the most time consuming piece of it, um, but it always is, right? It's all, I think the, proper data preparation is always the most important part of um, a pro an analytical project. So it was a good investment to make and we learned a lot from it. Um, I think on a weekly basis, we also had weekly meetings that we very much enjoyed um, working through. And uh, in between as well, it was cool to collaborate over the various, you know, we had Slack communications, we had emails going and these guys are amazing working across different time zones. I, I was very impressed by that and the flexibility. And um, yeah, so it was a cool investment of time and definitely started with the data prep. Well, well thank you both for, uh, for highlighting um, those pieces of it. Um, I'm not gonna summarize what we, uh, what we all heard because uh, the students did a great job of that as well as Yola and, and, and Gina. But at this time, I would, I have one request of all you, of you before we close up. Can you please all, put on your video because um, your video screen, Jillian Rogers, if you don't all know her, she is our Associate Director for Marketing and Communications and she is going to take a uh, snapshot so she can tweet and post about our Analytics um, Accelerator Summit today. 
So uh, Jillian, do you wanna go off mute and say one, two, three, or would you like me to do that? Why don't you do it, Mary? <laughs> okay, so on the count of three, I want everyone to say, you know, Analytics Accelerator and smile. Um, one, two, three, Analytics Accelerator. Analytics Accelerator. Analytics Accelerator. <laughs> All right, great. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I've just a few um, uh, short housekeeping items here are one, again, a big thank you to our corporate partners, McDonald's and uh, Fox Entertainment for participating in the Spring Accelerator. Really appreciate that. I also want to thank our Wharton Analytic Fellows. It's a student uh, organization that helps us um, actually get the talent, um, screen the talent for these teams. And I do want to thank them. I want to thank every one of the students that have participated. For all of you on the phone that or on the call here that don't realize these students are, do, it, this project is not associated with any class or capstone. It is all extracurricular and it is unbelievable the amount of time and energy and commitment that you all give. We are so very proud of you and we are very, very thankful that you deliver and really stand up, you know, the Wharton and Penn brand and make us um, so proud to have you uh, part of Wharton Customer Analytics. So thank you to all of the students and the Wharton Analytics Fellow Club. In addition, I would like to say thank you to the Wharton Customer Analytics Senior Fellows who helped on guide these students, mm -hmm. Patricio Cernetti, Harini, Sharadhan, Neil Hoyne, and Sarab Gura. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And my team, um, Rachel Dutcher, Jillian Rogers, uh, uh, Nicole Wing Trexler, Maddie Lasser, uh, and Rachel Dutcher, and Matt Gray, uh, Brandon Krakowski. Did I forget anyone? I feel like this is like the Oscars, thanking everyone, and I'm accepting an award, but I don't have an award. But you guys did great. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. The last thing um, I need to do is you guys will all receive an email. It, it, there is a survey. Please, this is really a call out to the students. Students, please, please, please fill out your surveys. It's a way in which we can make this program so much better. We would really appreciate that. Um, fill it out within 24 hours. Thank you everyone for attending. Maddie, one last check. Do I, did I forget anything to, to mention to everybody? You covered it all, Mary. Oh, okay. So um, have a wonderful Friday. Students, um, you really are the ones who kicked yeah. it out of the park here. We are so, so appreciative. Be healthy and, and safe and, and have a great weekend. Um, good luck with the rest of the semester. Really happy to see you all. Thank you. Thank Bye. you so much. Thank you. Thank, right, you. thank you. Bye. You ready?